All right. Well, we want to welcome everyone to another noontime hour where we can just gather with each other and lift each other up. This We consider this family time. So we're coming to the table. So while we do that, let's go to the Lord. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this moment in time where we can gather together to lift each other up, to encourage one another, to connect. We know that you are all about relationship, Lord, and we know during this season we've been able to connect in ways that we never would have before, and we are so, so grateful. And so I do pray especially for Lance and his father-in-law. I pray for Brenda and Brenda's mom. Lord, these are difficult times. I pray for this season where he's in the hospital that somebody would see Jesus in it, that they would find you through it and that he would recover. Be with his heart, Lord. Keep it strong. And I pray for all those that care for him. Thank you for their service to, and your, that they can be your hands and feet to him while he's in the hospital. But give them peace. And I, and I do pray for Lance's um, quarantine right now with his children while they're waiting a surgery. I pray that that would go well as well. But we also want to lift up the other families in our region who are suffering with COVID. I pray, Father, that you would be their peace as they walk through this difficult journey. And so, Father, I thank you for our time together. I pray that you would be with Nick as he leads it. And I pray, Father, that uh, in all things, we would see you through it. In Jesus' name, amen. Nick. Thank you, Colleen. So, you know, the, 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 struggle, the struggle today is I come to you in the heart of the Christmas season, um, wanting to celebrate and, and give tidings of, hey, you know, the things that we should be concerned about is making sure that um, we're presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the birth of the child, the birth of the Savior in a way that, that gets people to really um, focus on that, turn from this dark season of, of chaos and, and um, you know, unknown and, and just take, take peace in the presence of the Savior come, right? To turn people's attention towards the fact that we don't live, we live in this world, but we're not of this world, that the, you know, kingdom, that, that God is in charge, that God is on the throne. Um, there are just so many ways that the church needs to be the salt and light to the world that, you know, you can't have the peace until you understand what that actually means. And so it's our job, especially as teachers and pastors and shepherds, um, to actually teach people to bring the gospel in an effective way, to bring the gospel in a meaningful way with authenticity and integrity. Um, and so today my challenge to you is what are you teaching your congregations? Um, you know, are you teaching them the peace of Christ or are you allowing the wolves and the lions to attack the flock with the disruption of, of you know, whether it be politics or um, fear or whatever, what are you allowing into your church? So, you know, that, that, that beast has not yet gone away. And, you know, I've been, I've been talking the last week, maybe a little bit longer, because I've been seeing the influence that, that comes when people say, you know, hey, do you have a mask, you know, do you have a mask policy imposed in your church? Um, and people say, well, you know, we really haven't imposed a mask policy because there's people in our church that would walk if we did that. Well, you know what? I don't care if people walk or not. What I care about is what message are you delivering about what scripture calls us to as a Christian community? That's what I care about. I, I care about integrity of gospel being presented when what matters is God's will and obedience to God's word, not so much what a majority of the people in the church want, or even one or two people or whatever it might be in the church want. Because once you sell out on, on softening what the word of God says for some other reason, You've completely corrupted the, the gospel, and you've, you've basically undermined your ability to, pre to preach it. So, you know, are we people of the word? Are we people of, you know, obedience? Or are we people that allow the whim of society to take us off what we probably should be doing? So, you know, again, I, I, I bring this down to, and, and I don't, I'm not trying to certainly impose a, a view on you. I'm simply saying that you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength tells us that only obedience to him is all that matters. Love your neighbor as yourself tells you the position of caring for others, the servanthood of, of Christ, the servanthood that we're all called to. Um, and then passages of scripture very specifically 
uh, you know, I use Romans 13, call us as a Christian community to live at peace with the world around us and not bring, um, I'll, I'll use the word maybe embarrassment to the kingdom by acting outside of God's will and word. So, you know, there are clear indications of what we're supposed to be doing and, and certainly masking up because the government tells us to is not a challenging situation. Like that, that is not something that should challenge us at all, right? Because again, if you think about it, the, the, the person that comes and says, my individual rights, my individual rights is completely missing the heart of Christ, right? And, and it's really hard to argue against that. Because we're not called to, to establish a political kingdom in this world. As a matter of fact, Christ was very clear when he told his apostle, or you know, when he told the, the disciples, that's not what I'm calling you to. As a matter of fact, I'm calling you away from that. So 2,000 years later, we don't get the right to reinterpret what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be delivering the gospel with integrity to people, saying, look, don't focus your attention on what's going on in the nightly news. Focus your attention on what's going on in the kingdom. What does God call you to do? What is God calling you to? So my challenge to you today really is, how are you interpreting your obedience, your personal obedience as a leader, as a pastor in the kingdom? What are you preaching? Are you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, or are you preaching a message of secularism? Are you preaching a place where libertarians are okay in the church because they're all about individual rights? Or are you preaching a message where we're called to is something different? It's about self-sacrifice. It's about caring for the people around you more than you care about yourself. Because at this point, every church should be operating under a masking policy. Every church. No question whatsoever. Every single church should be operating under a masking and social distancing policy. which means every church should also be teaching those people who are rebellious what it means to live in the gospel, what it means to live with integrity to God's word, what it means to be self-sacrificial self for the greater good. So, you know, and, and my concern today isn't so much even, you know, when I share this with you, it's, it's even not about the concerns raised in a health crisis, right? It's not about that. What it's about is how are the churches of God communicating with integrity God's word? How are they communicating with integrity what it means to live in obedience to the king of kings? Right? It's not about, you know, it is about caring for people's health. It absolutely is about that. But even more importantly, it's about how do we submit to the king of kings who we are called to submit to? How do we present the gospel in a way? Are we presenting it with the integrity that Scripture would call us to? Because, man, I'll tell you what, over the last several months, I've heard a lot of people talk about influences in their church that are not influences leading them to obedience. They are influences leading them to produce a fearful environment, right? When people come in and talk about the threat of government over the church, there is no threat of government over the church, not, not the kingdom church. There certainly is a threat of government maybe over the traditions of the church, but not over the heart of the church and the kingdom church. There's no threat. There can't be. Nobody has that power other than Satan to draw you away from what it is we're supposed to be living. So my message to you today is about health, but it's not about physical health and COVID. It's about spiritual health and obedience to the one true God. And the fact that too many people have been influenced by worldly issues of politics, worldly issues of civil rights, worldly issues of a whole bunch of things, that if you move to Scripture, doesn't exist. It's not part of our focus. So are we called to look out for the marginalized and the, you know, those that are, are being violated, their civil rights are being violated? And so, yeah, we're called to look out for others. But the idea of standing up for protections for the church, that's not what we're called to. So, you know, what, you know, I just lay it out there. I'm not making a judgment call or whatever. I'm simply saying, how do your actions as leaders of flocks, how do your actions, you measure it for yourself, stack up to what it means to be obedient to God's word?
I've heard people discount Romans 13 completely. That's a pretty bold move. You know, interpreting in such a way. That's a pretty bold move, man. I hope you're prepared to answer for that when the day comes. So again, don't take it personally, those on this call. I mean, I speak this. I don't know who watches this, you know, beyond today. Um, but I'm telling you right now, Scripture's pretty clear in a lot of ways, and we, we've been imposing maybe some gray areas in this season. And when I say about being the salt and light, the salt and light is actually reading those Scriptures, wrestling with those Scriptures, and then living by them to the best of your ability. Are you doing that? Are you putting others first? Are you setting aside your personal political views? Are you setting aside whatever it might be that keeps you from presenting the gospel with integrity? Because when the gospel is presented with integrity, we all know the gospel speaks to it itself. The scriptures speak to it itself. People are not going to want to hear it, and people are going to leave. That's not your job to keep them happy and, and keep them there. The job of a leader of the flock is to make sure it's being presented with integrity, authenticity. It's building up a core of people that are willing to submit, to sacrifice themselves, to be obedient to the one true king. And when we're obedient to the one true king, by very nature, we're caring about other people around us more than we're caring about our own personal interests. Can't separate that. Everything you do is about others. Nothing's about you. And please don't make it about the church as we traditionally apply it. Please don't do that. Because that might be the worst piece of it at all, of all. How are we truly caring for the people with the most important thing? The most important thing is the baby to be born in this season, if you will. We love to talk about Jesus. But are we learning from Jesus? Are we teaching from Jesus? Are we teaching in an appropriate manner where we can sit back and at the end of the day feel good about how we, we did the best job we possibly can to live with integrity to God's holy word? That's my challenge today. You know, it's, it's, I want you all to be thinking about that. I want you to be praying about that. I want you to really be in the scripture. I want you to wrestle with this. Too many can quote scripture, but they don't live by it. So this season, as we're sharing the word, as we're sharing the love, as we're sharing the peace of the season, as we're sharing the, the ultimate um, gift of Jesus Christ, let's do that with integrity. And, and please, I, I realize a lot of you are struggling with, with pushback in your churches, uh, with people who really don't, you know, they're not mature in their own faith. And, and again, you all know this, I don't care what office they hold in your church. They, that doesn't give them, that does not grant them maturity. Maturity comes with obedience. Maturity comes with sacrifice. Maturity comes with understanding that it is, in fact, the triune God who's in control and not us. And we submit to his will and his word. And where we're doing that, you're caring for your flock. When something else trumps that, you're the wolf. So let's make sure that none of us are, are allowing wolves in our leadership to be, you know, consuming a flock that already needs um, a lot more Jesus and a whole lot less nightly news. So I'm going to pause there. Um, and we're going to pray a little bit more about that, but I look forward to your comments as well as, as we go into this. So um, I don't know what's going on around. You can, you can certainly share uh, prayer requests, you can share praises, uh, or you can simply respond to what I've said, and that's good too. So that's what we're here for. We're here as a community uh, to try to build one another up. So uh, I don't know if, uh, I'm not going to start, I'm not going to start John Cook, because I did that the other night, and that was a big mistake, man. You know, he goes on his, he goes on his preaching rants, and, and nobody else gets a chance to talk. So, you know, John, you just, you just stay quiet now. Nick, there was one comment that I think you should hear. It said uh, that was a good work word. He really appreciated it. And it said, we need the, that uh, leadership and to, uh, to do so ourselves. I, he's personally had more reluctance than he should long, uh, along the way. So, you know, you're touching on things that I think are resonating with people. <clears throat> it's tough. I mean, all of us have the responsibility to look within ourselves first. Are we living with integrity? Mm -hmm. 
Don't start criticizing somebody else until you look inside yourself and see if you're living with integrity. So can I, I got to say something quick, Nick, cause I got to leave early. Um, I have a, I have a Pearl Harbor thing to go do with the VA today. Um, just got a quick praise report. We got our um, Code Blue Shelter launched uh, with another church. We're going to be running a Code Blue Shelter up here because we discovered with all the homeless this year with our food truck. Um, and we're going to make sure we have scripture there, a way to present the gospel. Um, fell into our lap the other day. We got a good location. It was basically handed to us. Um, we have another church that can provide meals and security. We have another church that's involved that's going to provide nursing staff. And then we're also going to provide the word of God as well. Um, so that's where we're heading right now with what's going on up here. Hey, Pat, just curious. Do you have, um, you know, like in the city, there, there are, are communities that pop up in different areas of homeless people and tents and so forth. Yep. Do you have that up your way? Yeah, we have two places that um, we can get into. But, like, if they know cops are coming, they, like, boot scoop boogie. They're gone. Um, we have one behind our Boyer's Market we go to a lot, and then there's one up in Shemokin. They call them the Hill People. Um, I just did a funeral for one of the Hill People a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah, that's what we're aiming at right now. A lot of these people have a lot of pride. They don't want to change their ways. They like where they're at. So instead of trying to get them to change their ways, we're meeting them where they're at, Nick. We're saying, hey, I understand you want to, this is the way you want to live. It's your choice. But can we do something to help you? Um, I can't be in, in a, you can't go in and change them. Um, that's just more to damage than good as far as I'm concerned. So no, we're meeting them where they're at and their needs where they're at. Maybe I'm wrong thinking that, but I don't think I am. If anybody's got a thought on it, I'd love to hear it. No, you're pretty much there, Pat. I mean, the bottom line is we, you know, the experience I've had, you can, you can, you uh, can, talk to your blue in the face with certain people, but until they're ready to either give up, you know, you know, acknowledge maybe mental health issues or uh, seek to give up addiction issues or um, whatever might be holding them back until they're willing to do that. Um, they're just going to, to them living on the street with that freedom is more important than a warm bed. So, and I know April, I don't know if you have anything you want to chime in. You're, you're my expert. So you're the one I would turn to and say, Hey, what do you think? So I don't know, April, if you have anything to share. Good to see you back on your feet, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> it feels better. <laughs> uh, no, I think you're right. I think it's, you know, you meet people where they are, and some don't want to change their circumstances. But as you grow in relationship with people and you learn, um, I, I think we look at homelessness a lot of times, or people in general look at homelessness a lot of times as something we need to fix or um, that the best thing for everybody is a home, but that's not necessarily true for everyone. So I think just meeting people where they are, listening, building the relationship, and knowing that the true need is that they have a relationship with Jesus and, and using whatever physical needs they might have to be able to have those kind of conversations, um, that's what's most important. So. Thank you, April. And we continue to pray for your whole family. Thank you. I think the boys didn't really have any symptoms, um, so that was good. And uh, they finish up their quarantine tomorrow. Angel's, I think, uphill now. He's uh, Last night wasn't quite as bad as the couple nights before that. So, um so we're just prayerful that, that God is uh, working there and that he's going to be better in the next few days and, and then we can move on. <laughs> Praise God. We'll continue to keep you in the prayers and um, we'll go from there. Thank you. Um, others, um, anybody have anything at this moment they want to share? Any prayer requests or... or uh, concerns or you know this is free time whatever you want to bring up that's good to go For some reason my phone keeps ringing in this moment i don't know why uh all right i'm gonna go around the horn and maybe start calling on some people
John, I'll, I'll give you the opportunity, man. I'll give you the floor. You're a brave man. <laughs> he preached a 45-minute message the other night, so, you know. I'll have to go back and look at it and see if there was any good points. Oh, there were a lot of good points, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, just uh, one of the things that, uh, as, as you talk about prayer, and, and we're taking a specific uh, approach now in praying for doctors, nurses, healthcare providers, and uh, nursing home uh, workers, uh, because they are at the forefront. And it's easy to say that they're in the forefront, and we do military and first responders. Um, but uh, I've had a series of phone calls and conversations with mothers of nurses on how their children are being run ragged uh, at the hospital. You know, not double shifts, triple shifts, um, because hospitals are undermanned. You know, some of them are making life decisions to step away from that career. Uh, those that continually do it and are continually at the forefront, um, we're just putting them specifically segregated on our prayer list uh, to make sure that we're praying for them. Mm. Um, as we're talking about compassion and all this, uh, which is what it comes down to. Um, but most of them, if you've got them in your congregations, you're probably hearing the same thing. Um, understaffed, overworked, uh, and, and uh, extremely stressed right now seems to be a current theme I'm picking up in my conversations. Um, so that just, as we talk prayers, we think about it. I mean, April, you just went through this. You can kind of uh, probably have seen some of this firsthand. Um, 